We know what we have to do. Then come, Sancho Panza. Let us rescue the Princess Dulcinea. You're gonna hurt yourself. Hey, that was my dance. Ah, Louise. The jubilant, charismatic, and mysterious hombre we've come to know and love from the original Resident Evil 4 all the way up to the recent Resident Evil 4 remake. As important to the overall narrative as his lust for some truly spicy senoritas, Luis is an essential component to the story and survival of both Leon and Ashley as they attempt to get out of this twisted Spanish countryside. While Luis was certainly a special and likable character in the original game back in 2005, the character has been tweaked to play an even more important role in the game's story in the recent remake, and this character's new revelations have impacts far beyond just this fourth mainline entry. Luis's heroic deeds towards the end of his life paved the way to redemption over his previous tragic missteps, and is ultimately remembered as one of the most significant and enjoyable characters of Resident Evil's incredible supporting cast. Of course, big spoilers ahead for Resident Evil 4 Remake, so if you haven't finished the game yet and don't want to get spoiled, come back here when you're ready. To better get an idea behind this enigma of a character, we need to first talk about Luis and shed light on the horrific tragedies he went through as a young boy. Luis was born into the very village we have come to know in the Spanish countryside in the setting of the game, and lost his mother during childbirth. His grandfather assumed the role of Luis's guardian, and took care of the young boy as they often spent their time hunting within the land's remote areas. Intuitive and with a deep thirst for knowledge, Luis was particularly fond of stories and fairy tales, more significantly, those of Don Quixote. The two would often hunt and grow to be a remarkable pair out in the wilds, until one day, Luis's grandfather was bitten by a particularly ravenous wolf. Upon making it back to their cabin, his grandfather knew that something was wrong with him. It was no ordinary bite. Rather, he had been succumbing to an illness that was about to change the village and its inhabitants forever. In Chapter 4 of Resident Evil 4 Remake, players are able to retread their way back to the location in which Leon had first encountered Luis, and in that exact spot rests a red gemstone ring and the old man's journal, a journal that was of utmost importance to Luis, the very journal of his now-deceased grandfather. The journal reads, Three years ago, my beloved daughter passed away shortly after giving birth to a son. Since then, the boy has grown considerably. He is a very curious child and has a true thirst for knowledge. He even tries to follow after me when I go out hunting. I can't take my eyes off him for a second. Whenever we walk in the forest, he always asks me to tell stories. He's very fond of Don Quixote. Although he's still small, the boy's observant and smart beyond his years. If he weren't stuck here, he might have become a scholar. I was a careless fool. I could have sworn I shot clean through the wolf's head, and yet it lunged at me. I was able to make it back to the cabin, but my wound is swollen and discolored. I cannot bear seeing the boy's worried eyes. My body moves on its own, and I can hear voices inside my head. Am I going mad? I can't die now and leave the boy behind. Dear God, please protect him. Hauntingly, players are able to find Vitores Mendez's telling of the events when players access the upper areas of Mendez's home during the night with Ashley. Within the attic, players can pick up the file titled Village Records Volume 1, of which contains haunting passages recounting the events of Luis's ailing grandfather and likely the events that changed Luis forever. The boy's grandfather has fallen ill, and his condition worsens every day. The boy worries terribly about him and there are murmurs of a madness among the villagers. As I took my leave, the old man pulled me aside and said, if anything happens, you know what to do. I could only nod in response. It was a terrible night. Everyone stood around the cabin and watched as it burned to the ground. The boy looked on without saying a word. Even as dawn broke, he didn't move a muscle. The next day, he was gone. Just like that, Luis had ventured out of his cabin for seemingly just a moment to catch some fresh air outside, and upon returning back to the one place he called home, he found his lone sanctuary engulfed in flames with the one man he cared most about caught in its blaze. The fire was said to have been brought about by Luis's grandfather, attempting to prevent the spread of his infection, 
And with all lost, Luis turned to a different path in life that would take him far away from the remote village he was born into. Luis would go on to obtain a degree as a biologist and quickly rose to the top as a decorated professional within his field, attracting the attention of Umbrella Pharmaceuticals. While with the company, he created numerous over-the-counter medications and became a highly important asset within the company. Due to his success within Umbrella, he held a spot within Umbrella Europe's sixth laboratory, which was the team that researched and procured the Nemesis T-Alpha Parasite. If that sounds familiar, then that's because it is. Luis was part of the team that brought Nemesis of Resident Evil 3 to life. Twitter user Jill Valenfield96 did an excellent job tying these files from Luis's lab at the end of Resident Evil 4 Remake to some files from Resident Evil 3 Remake, detailing the connection Luis had with his time under Umbrella Europe's 6th Laboratory Division. This Nemesis T-Alpha parasite was engineered to take control of a victim by taking over the host's nervous system, a mighty similar correlation to the Las Plagas, don't you think? Upon realizing that Luis was working with a shady organization that would be of great harm to the world, Luis resigned from the company and did his best to leave no trace of him ever having worked there. During the events of 1998's catastrophe in Raccoon City, involving the leaking of the T-Virus from Umbrella's lab from within the city, Luis was nowhere to be found. In fact, he was thousands of miles away back in the village in Spain where he grew up, smartly having left to avoid any prosecution from the government as it clamped down on Umbrella. With no way to track down Luis and with his whereabouts unknown, Luis, now back in the remote village in Spain, found the village had changed significantly since he was gone. A strange cult by the name of Los Illuminados had taken over the village, with its leader, Osmond Sadler, serving as its lord. A cult worshipping a parasitic insect found from within the village, Sadler had a goal, to infect everything around him, including powerful figures around the world, to do his bidding. Sadler wanted to rule the world. He wanted ultimate power, but made sure Luis wasn't aware of his intentions. Sadler hired Luis and took him to a private island research facility where Luis helmed the genetic research of the Las Plagas. As found in several files from within Luis's lab in the island, Luis remarks about his time finding ways to remove a Plagas infection. Sadler, of course, wanted to know if and how the parasite could be removed in order to engineer an even stronger Plaga that could withstand any surgical operation to remove it. Under the orders of Sadler and unaware of Sadler's sinister intentions, Louise engineered a way in which to remove the Plaga without killing the host, and in fascination of this parasitic quality, engineered the development of such abominations like El Gigante and the Regenerator. With more research into the human Plaga hybrids, this resulted in the creation of creatures like the Novistaros, Verdugo, and U3. U3, you are missed. In time, Louise realized the true intentions behind Osmond Sadler, and feeling an overwhelming guilt of the amount of research that he and his team had undergone to procure such vile creatures only to assist Sadler, he resigned yet again. He couldn't just escape though. I mean, he was the biggest asset to Sadler with his genetic research of the Las Plagas. There was no way Sadler was simply let Louise escape. Knowing this, he reached out to a fellow colleague he met during his time in college to help assist him with his escape via email. Well, as it turns out, Ada was the one that intercepted Luis's email and promised an escape for Luis so long as he turned over some amber in which the Plaga are born from. We see the amber firsthand late into the remake when traveling with Luis via the mine tunnels. This, thus, completes the most crucial timeline of events that happened with Luis before the game takes place. From a researcher and engineer for both Umbrella and with Los Illuminados under Sadler, Luis was trying to escape his horrible memories, both from the scars of his childhood and the scars of the damage he had inadvertently caused to the world. In planning to escape from the village, Luis ends up getting caught and is seen where Leon first finds him in a tunnel underneath the wreckage of a house. This very house, presumably the same cabin in which he grew up in, where the player can find a picture of a young Luis with his grandfather. 
Presumably held captive to torture Luis, Leon comes to his rescue, only to find the village chief Mendez, now under the influence of Las Plagas under Sadler, subduing Leon. From here, Luis assists Leon with breaking free of his chains when transported to the facility by the valley, but Luis mysteriously vanishes without much of a trace, other than telling Leon that Ashley, the president's daughter, was being held in a nearby church. Leon of course runs into Luis again as they become under siege by the bombardment of Ganados, and upon narrowly escaping, Luis reveals that in order to remove the Plaga from within Leon and Ashley, that they need to get it surgically removed. Luis, showing his scar regarding such a procedure, instills some confidence in Leon and Ashley that Luis may have an understanding of what is going on in this crazed village. Why are you helping us? Because it makes me feel better. Let's leave it at that. We'll contact you later. This is of particular importance, and one that keeps occurring throughout Leon's interactions with Luis. Immediately after this scene, Luis bumps into Ada, as she reminds Luis that she will only rescue Luis from this village so long as he retrieves a piece of amber from the Plaga's hive. Of course, Luis accepts Ada's request and sets off to the hive to retrieve a shard of amber, his ticket out of there. Fast forward a bit when Leon survives his encounter with Verdugo, Leon meets up with Luis in a mine that leads straight to the amber. Here, Luis gives Leon a suppressant, able to slow down the infection of the Plaga within Leon, buying him more time to get the Plaga surgically removed from his body. You didn't answer my question. What are you after? I just want to feel good about myself, make amends, or something like that. Again, after bringing up the fact that he used to work for Umbrella, Luis mentioned that he wanted to make amends, to right the wrongs of his past work. After an incredible minecart thrill ride, Leon can't help but bring up how he doesn't understand Luis, risking his life to help assist Leon and Ashley. I don't get you. Why risk your life like this? You don't know us. I told you. It makes me feel better. Be straight with me for once. Los Illuminados. I was working for them. See, there you go. Helping the two of you doesn't make up for it. I know that. But still, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. It is here where we unfortunately see the demise of Luis at the hands of Jack Krauser. With every last ounce of energy left, Luis assists Leon in the fight by fending off Krauser, while Luis utters his last words. I'm not looking good, eh, my friend? And such a loss to the ladies of the world. Don't talk. Take this. The key to my laboratory. Go there and remove those damn parasites. <coughs> Help Ashley. And people can change. Even though Luis was mere moments from securing his ticket off the island with the amber, Luis is the embodiment of hope with his playful energy illuminating a very bleak world. It comes as a reminder that no matter how jubilant or joyful someone may be, we may never know what's really going on behind the smiles and playful attitude. Whether a coping mechanism to keep pushing forward or trying to see the light in even the worst of times, Luis is a character whose loss leaves a profound impact on the events that unfold both before and after Resident Evil 4. With Luis's lab key in hand, Leon sets off to his lab in the island to rid the Plaga within Ashley, who then assists Leon in ridding the virus once and for all. Within Leon's lab in the final chapter of the game, we get to see the workings of the inner genius of Luis with his time at Umbrella and under Osmond Sadler of the Los Illuminados. Seeing his connection to Nemesis of Resident Evil 3 is quite an incredible revelation, 
a tie-in that further connects RE4 with the titles that came before it, with Louise's handprint firmly imprinted on some of the most significant events that took place within the Resident Evil franchise. As a longtime fan of the franchise, having more time to learn about Luis through Resident Evil 4 Remake has only elevated the experience more, and I hope this video does the same for you. Luis, may you march on, cowboy. Hey, that was my dance. Okay, we hurry, I get it. Do me a solid by pumping that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to the channel if you loved it. Want me to make another video like this about other characters? leave me a comment below. Make sure to check out this video detailing all the changes coming up to the upcoming Mercenaries mode, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Peace!